It was a sunny Saturday morning, and Samuel had invited Amy, Ethan, and Jack to breakfast. It had been three days since Samuel had seen Jack and his grandchildren, because he had traveled to the city to a special hospital to have his eyes checked by an optometrist. Samuel set up two extra easels in the garden next to his easel. He was trying to encourage his grandchildren to paint with him. He had long since given up on trying to get Jack to take up painting as a hobby. When he was at the hospital, the optometrist had advised Samuel to rest his eyes, but he found it very difficult to give up his daily trip to the garden to paint. Amy and Ethan arrived first. They really enjoyed having breakfast with their grandfather. Samuel always served homemade pancakes, eggs, sausage, bacon, and hash browns. The breakfasts were always amazing and delicious. Hey, Granddad, yelled Ethan. I'm starving. Is breakfast ready yet? I doubt you are actually starving, replied Samuel, but it is almost ready, just scrambling the eggs. Moments later, Jack arrived just in time to help Samuel serve the breakfast feast. Once the food had been served, Alfie arrived in the kitchen in the hope of getting a tasty morsel. Samuel pretended to be strict about feeding Alfie from the table, but in truth, he loved to spoil him. You've outdone yourself, said Jack appreciatively. He too enjoyed Samuel's famous breakfasts. What's the plan for today, asked Jack, hoping that there wouldn't actually be one. Well, I'm going to make these two monkeys work a little, said Samuel, grinning. They are going to have a painting lesson, and all three of you are going to have a lesson on the science of color. That just means he's going to talk a lot, announced Jack, and the children and everybody else began to laugh. Samuel, Jack, and the children spent the next hour eating, talking, and enjoying each other's company. Ethan secretly reached down under the table and fed Alfie small pieces of sausage, though Samuel was perfectly aware of exactly what he was doing. Then, after loading the dishwasher and tidying up the kitchen, they made their way out into the garden. Samuel had set up the easels up under the shade of the large apple tree. Once everyone was settled, including Alfie, he advised that the children pick a subject to begin painting something that they could clearly see and would enjoy to paint. I'd like to paint the bird feeder, announced Ethan, and I think I'll paint that potted geranium, said Amy, pointing to a plant with vivid red petals sitting snugly in a terracotta pot. I've chosen to sit here and close my eyes, said Jack, and then promptly he did just that. The first thing I want you to understand, and I've already explained this to Jack, is that the waves of light energy race through space from the sun to earth. Samuel began, each type of light energy has its own unique wavelength. A wavelength is the distance between the crests or tops of two waves. Some waves are longer than others. Tell me which type of invisible light has a longer wavelength, a microwave, or an x-ray a microwave good we cannot see all the sun's light energy but the energy we can see is called visible light white light is made up of a spectrum of all the colors we see in visible light this graphic shows all the wavelengths of the light energy coming from the sun this range of wavelengths, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, is visible to humans without using any kind of special equipment. Do these colors remind you of anything familiar? Some light is invisible, such as x-rays, continued Samuel. An x-ray is a powerful, invisible ray of energy that can pass through an object and a special x-ray machines can make it possible to see what is inside the body. That's complicated, chimed in Ethan. Not really, said Samuel. I agree with him, said Jack, opening one eye and pointing to Ethan. Let me finish explaining, and it might make more sense, continued Samuel. We need light to be able to see. Light from the sun travels to earth, and most of it is invisible to us unless we have special equipment like x-ray machines. The visible light that shines on objects in the world around us. Some of the light reflects off of these objects and into our eyes. Then, part of our eyes receive that information and communicate with our brain. The brain figures out what colors we are seeing. 
However, and this is what is really interesting, said Samuel eagerly, the color of an object is determined by whether that object transmits, reflects, or absorbs light. Sometimes it is a combination of everything. Oh, it's so much easier to understand now, joked Jack. Think of it this way, continued Samuel. Look at the grass. It looks green because it reflects green light waves, but it absorbs all the other wavelengths of visible light, meaning it absorbs all the other colors so that it only appears green. What does absorb mean, asked Ethan with the puzzled look on his face. He had by now finished sketching the bird feeder and was dipping his paintbrush into some carefully mixed brown paint. Absorbed light is the light that is soaked up by an object and is therefore no longer visible. The color you see when you look at an object is actually the reflected light. An object has no color if there is no reflected light, explained Samuel. Oh, I get it, said Amy, who by now was painting the terracotta pot. That's why my art teacher said that black material absorbs all colors of light and doesn't reflect any. So in a way, black is not a true color. It is more of a lack of light. That's exactly right, Amy, said Samuel. And white is the opposite of that. An object that appears white to our eyes reflects all the colors of the spectrum and absorbs none of them. Is that why people say you should wear white clothes in the summertime, asked Ethan, who was concentrating hard on painting the roof of the bird feeder? Exactly, exclaimed Samuel. White material reflects most of the light that hits it and absorbs very little. So if you wear white clothing, you tend to stay a little cooler. So think about what happens if you wear black clothing on a sunny day. Do you feel warmer or cooler wearing a dark colored clothing? Who would like some ice cream, asked Jack loudly. He had grown restless and wanted to do something fun. Yay, ice cream, screeched Ethan. Yay, yes, please, said Amy. Here's an interesting question, said Samuel. Which would melt faster, a chocolate ice cream or a vanilla ice cream? The children frowned thoughtfully. Chocolate, called Ethan. And why is that, asked Samuel. Because it is a darker color and it would absorb more of the light, said Amy. Very good, said Samuel. Do you have mint chocolate chip, asked Ethan. That's my favorite, yelled Jack. Mine too, agreed Ethan. Do you have strawberry ice cream, asked Amy. I sure do, said Samuel. How about we go inside and cool off with a little bit of ice cream? Samuel didn't need a reply. Jack and the children were already walking towards the kitchen door. They hadn't realized it, but they had been out in the garden for quite some time now. And in that time, the rain clouds had gathered in in the distance. Moments later, Samuel, Jack, and Amy, and Ethan were all sitting at the kitchen enjoying double scoops of ice cream. Amy and Ethan had drizzled chocolate sauce on top of theirs. There was even a very small scoop of strawberry ice cream for Alfie, even though Samuel knew that he really shouldn't have any. What do you call a ghost's mother and father? asked Ethan as he licked his chocolate sauce from around his mouth. Mm, I don't know. What do you call a ghost mother and father? repeated Jack. Transparents, announced Ethan. Which one runs faster, hot or cold? Ethan continued. Hot. Everyone can catch a cold, answered Amy. Ah, uh, you've already heard it, said Ethan. Okay, how about this one, said Amy. Why is it so hot in a stadium after a football game? Samuel, Jack, and Ethan thought for a while, but could not come up with a good enough answer. Okay, smarty pants, tell us the answer, said Jack. Because all the fans have left, said Amy, clearly delighted with herself. Look at that, said Samuel, pointing through the kitchen window. It's a rainbow, exclaimed Amy. Oh no, he's going to tell us how they are formed, said Jack, pointing to a spoon at Sp pointing his spoon at Samuel. Well, as a matter of fact, replied Samuel, a rainbow is a perfect spectrum, spectrum of colors. We see the spectrum when waves of white light encourage and counter millions of falling raindrops, just like the glass of water in the straw. Ethan, the light waves slow down and refract when they come into contact with the transparent raindrops. Essentially, beams of white light break apart into the colors of the rainbow. Each transparent raindrop acts as a prism, perfectly splitting white light into all of its colors, explained Samuel. 
Oh, in class, we use prisms, shouted Ethan. It was so cool. It was like making our own rainbows. Samuel, Jack, and Amy, and Ethan continued to chat and joke and enjoy each other's company. After a while, they returned to the garden where Samuel continued his painting lesson. He advised the children to pay attention to the angles and qualities of light and shade that hung in the air like soft, clear, transparent wings. He talked to them about texture and tone. All the while, Jack sat in his garden chair and napped. Morning turned to afternoon and afternoon to early evening, and no one wanted to leave the comfort and shade of the beautiful garden, not even Alfie.